Okay, so welcome. If you clicked on this video, it's probably because you wanna learn how I was able to make this video right here. And hopefully by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to learn the three editing fundamentals that I use to be able to accomplish this video. Now, step one, of course, is filming the actual video itself. So what I did, I just used my iPhone on the 0.5 mode. I made sure to film outside because there's natural light and the 0.5 mode works a lot better when there's a lot of light. Now, when I was walking outside, there were these blocks on the floor that worked perfectly in my case. If you have the option to have practical things in your footage, use that. So if you have rocks around you or bricks or something that you could step onto, that's gonna make your video 10 times better because you're using a real life practical element inside your video, combining it with the effect. So that's what I did. I used my phone to film and I made sure that the movement was convincing enough and had enough information inside of it so that later on the computer could do its thing and track the footage smoothly. Once you have your footage, the first thing you're gonna do in the editing room, of course, is rotoscoping. Now inside of After Effects itself, they have a pretty good rotoscoping system already. And so if you open up After Effects, you go up here to the toolkit and you use the effect, you guessed it, the rotoscope tool. So essentially you're just gonna go in, you're gonna double click on your layer that you wanna rotoscope and you wanna select your body that's gonna be on top of everything else. Now the rotoscoping tool inside of After Effects is pretty good. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. Now, if for some reason it's not working instead of After Effects, normally what I do, my plan B, is to go over to this website that's called Runway. Now, as for all the Mac users, Runway doesn't work in Safari, so you have to um, open it inside of Chrome. So once you have this opened up, you're going to actually use the magic green screen tool that it has inside of the website itself. And don't tell Adobe this or tell them because they'd probably need to fix this, but Runway does this like 10 times faster than After Effects. So this tool for me actually sometimes is the first option. Now the best and worst thing about Runway is that it has a free option, which you can do a lot of stuff on, but when you export, it's limited to 1080p, which if you're filming in 4K, it's a problem. If you're not filming in 4K, you have nothing to worry about. That's okay. It's still faster than After Effects. I got a blinking light for some reason. I'm gonna... Okay, there you go, sorry. I'm using a different camera today and it started overheating, so I took a break. Anyways, once I had the main parts that I wanted rotoscoped, rotoscope, I ended up having to go in and manually mask the blocks because for some reason the rotoscoping wasn't working and runway wasn't working. So then I had to proceed to go in and manually mask it. Now inside of After Effects, they have Mocha AE tracking. So that is a really good tool if you want to make it go faster. And that's what I, that's what I use for a lot of it. I then found just going frame by frame gave me the best results that, that I needed. Now, hopefully for you, that's not the case but sometimes that's just what you're gonna have to do. Moving on, now inside of After Effects itself is an amazing 3D tracker, so that's what I use. So when you have your footage, you're gonna go over here to the tracker window and you're gonna click track camera or 3D track, I don't remember what it's called. Once you do that, just let, just let the program do its thing and hopefully you should have a perfect track. So to make the cube itself is extremely easy. Many hours later. Frame per second, so that is great. It's getting to the... Sorry, got distracted. Where was I? Oh, once you have successfully 3D tracked your video, you're then gonna wanna make the 3D block. Now, what I ended up doing originally was using a plugin called Element 3D. And this makes everything a lot easier because they have a really good 3D system that you can use inside of After Effects. But it is a paid plugin and not everyone has that option. So I'm gonna show you how to do it for free. So because we're working with blocks, this is one of the easiest 3D models that you can make inside of After Effects. So essentially, you're gonna wanna grab a picture of the texture that you want. So in this case, we're using cement. So you can easily go to Google, find an image of cement texture, download it, bring it into After Effects, and this is what you're gonna wanna do. Turn this layer 3D, scale it down a bit, and then duplicate it five times. So you're gonna want to have six different layers. Once you have these six different layers, you wanna move each one and position them to being a different side of the cube. Now square has four sides, but the cube has six, right? Yeah, once you have the six layers added together all into one block, you're gonna to wanna to pre-compose all of that. 
But here's the trick. You're gonna wanna click this toggle right here and the 3D box. This is gonna allow you to move it in 3D space in your original video. So once you have that, bring it into your scene, position it under your feet or where you're wanting to step. And then if you have multiple blocks, do the same step or duplicate this, the same block and just move it to wherever you step. Now, my favorite part was the actual environment creation process. So essentially what I did, I went to pexels.com and I downloaded a free image of a really cool scenery that I found. Now, as you can see, it's not a 360 image. So what I then did was brought it inside of Photoshop and then I used the generative fill to extend the image and make it an HDRI. Once I had that, I was able to bring it back into After Effects and use it as the background. Now, because your footage is already tracked, this part is probably the easiest. You're gonna put it underneath the rotoscope footage and your 3D blocks, and then you're gonna apply the effect CC environment, and it should automatically just work. You can play with the settings to adjust the, to adjust the horizon and everything to make everything look right. Okay, once you have that, the next step is then overall compositing. Okay, this is gonna be adding the final touches, adding extra lights, adding uh, some smoke, uh, making sure all the colors match. Play with the settings, make sure everything looks right. If for some reason something doesn't look right, add something on top of it, like smoke or dust or wind or something, like a, like a lens blur or you know lens distortion to make it seem more dreamy. And then to finish off, I ended up just adding sound, making sure I color graded it at the end, and this is pretty much what you end up with. But so yeah, that is pretty much how I made this video. Um, I'm wanting to make more tutorials, but I'm also currently starting to make an actual course, a more in-depth course where you can see me go in and actually edit a, the video and teach you more in detail of what I do to be able to get the final product. Now, if you want to see a specific tutorial on that or you have specific requests, please leave it down in the comments below because that course is going to be coming out soon. But yeah, again, thank you for stopping by. I hope you learned something. If you do end up making your own video using these fundamentals and posting it online, please tag me on Instagram or even TikTok and I would love to see what you do. Um, I will see you next time. Have a good night. Good night. It's still day. Um, you know what I mean.